Hi there. Ordinarily you see almost production from dead sea salt, which is what you see in 106 there. Also, people are starting to talk a lot more about getting almost from water traps, magnetic water traps. And so I thought I'd just do a comparison. 105 has water from a magnetic trap. The I've used rare fairly strong rare earth magnets and without going into detail then running at about a litre a minute for about 12 hours um, you've, you've got really two lots of it to make up that almost a litre there and so it took about 24 hours of collection and so therefore hundreds and hundreds of litres condensed down into less than a litre and it also has the same amount of dead sea salt which is 150 grams and I'll proceed everything else exactly the same and hopefully at the end we can see a difference in the in the precipitate. We'll be taking a source of the water is Murray River water uh, for 105 and rainwater for 106. You can see the slight discoloration in the Murray River water. Uh, it is uh, filtered but the stain's still there. It's Flown all, flowed all the way from the snowy mountains and many different sources and aquifers that flow into that river. So there's many different sources and if there's any M-state element around in water then surely it should be in this water. So now I'll begin and treat everything exactly the same. Dissolve that salt in the water and begin to form the first precipitate. That's the end result of taking the pH up to about 10.7 and it only took a few extra mil for the 105 which is the M state water, the magnetized water or magnetic trap water and we'll need to let that settle out well, there's the result after about seven hours of settling uh, you can see that 105 which is the magnetic water trap water has got significantly more precipitate in it. Let's see if you can get down the right height. You can just pick out that, that it's got more there. Perhaps if you look at the amount of water left in it rather than the amount of white, you can see that there's more water above it. The precipitate in 106. Anyway, um, I have to wash this three times, which I'll fill the jars right up, drain off that water, fill it up with fresh water and wash it three times and then um, I'll run the pH all the way back down to down to and that's the titration curve for the two scenarios and if I can get in a little bit closer uh, the blue one you can see how that a lot more quickly finished around 10.7 uh, you'll also note that it increases very quickly to 9.5 uh, pH at the start and that's pretty level as it resists going any higher as it's pumping um, precipitate out of solution and then finally when the reaction's done then it starts to go very quickly at the end so you have to have your eyes about you and your wits about you as you get towards the end otherwise you'll go too far so um, I've done three washes and that's what it looks like there the little black line on 106 uh, just shows it's got the same amount of precipitate as when I started and you can see that 105 settled a little bit more um, but it is slightly more than 106 but that doesn't really show up so I'll be take, racking that water off the top and then uh, bring the pH back down so we're using hydrochloric acid 30% and just using a syringe to put that in drop by drop until the pH gets down to about one. Somewhere just before one the solution should, should go clear and then we'll set about the next stage. So, okay. There's the titration curve to bring it all pH down to one. Uh, you can see there it took about nearly 120 mil to bring it down and again had to be very careful near the end. Uh, the reason why there's only one graph is because they're virtually exactly the same and they're overlaid against one another and here's the solution. You might be, able, might be able to see that 105 is slightly darker than 106 
Uh, ignore the black in there, that's just come off the stirrer, which will come out. Um, so I'm expecting there to be more sediment in 105. And in, in fact, a lot of the sediment in 106 could be a little bit of contamination from the stirrer, although you wouldn't expect to be too much from that. Uh, so I'll let that settle out. And we'll rack off the solutions, which is what we want to keep this time. The solutions have now been removed from their sludge which is in the glasses, which will now be thrown away and the solution's back in the original containers and we'll now take the, the pH of that back upwards, usually using caustic and usually using about a third of a gram per mil of water and um, that just makes the reaction go at the right speed for me to control and be able to think about it, particularly towards the end of the reaction and in this case we'll be going no higher than 9.0 so hopefully stopping around 8.8 .8 or 8.9 depending it's some trouble with this titration as you can see it only takes about 4 mil for it to get to a pH of about 4 uh, the trouble is once it reaches 4 it starts to uh, continue to rise very slowly and the faster you stir it the faster it rises and so just watching that, then having to start with an eyedropper, um, put hydrochloric acid back in it just to keep the pH from going above 9. So that's what I've been doing for quite some time on both of them. So they're creeping up to about 9 now. I don't know if I can get my arm in the shot with the pH ready. So if I dangle that in there. See so we're up to 9 again. So what I'm going to have to do is put a just one drop, one drop of solution in. Uh, that was that was more a bubble than a drop. There, and I'll put one here as well, and stir that again briskly. And likewise, this one. Check the pH again. So we're down to about 8.5. That's stable. But it seems to be related to stirring. The more you stir it, it seems to be taking energy from the stirring almost to. the reaction to go. Let's measure that again. So we're creeping up to 8.7. I didn't stir this one as vigorously but it's still to oh, see it's going up to 9 again already so I need to be able to put another drop in this one. And again mostly air yeah, that's more like a drop there. Anyway, I won't bore you with this, I'll um, just struggle away and hopefully I can stabilise the reaction below, um, below 9 and let it settle out. Having racked it off and poured the remainder into two glasses, um, just so it's easier to collect the precipitate, get rid of most of that that fluid and let it settle again. Uh, you should be able to just see in 105 that it looks to my eye that there's about 25 to 30 percent more precipitate maybe um, but I'll I'll know more when I um, measure how many mils I'll probably put it into a standard millimeter range each and also also weigh it to see uh, whether there's any difference there so I took off the last bit of fluid with a paper wick and then I measured it for 105 I ended up getting uh, 20 mil which weighed 21 grams and for 106 I measured 19 mil and it weighed 18 grams um, so I've just done that in a special teared little measure container and um, 
and there is a little bit of water in there from the original fluid which I used to wash out the measuring container. So there you have it, the M water on the on the 105 did did come in at 10% more than the pure Dead Sea Salt. They both had Dead Sea Salt of course but uh, 105 uh, showed 10% more. So it's possible that that it worked. Um, otherwise um, not a startling result but nevertheless seems to be more in material in our Murray River water.